is up, YouTubers. You know what time it is. That's right, it's Thursday. It's a little after 12 o'clock. It is time for the most exhilarating, electrifying, entertaining cooking show on the net right now. That's right, it is time for lunch break. Brought to you by Rectech, powered by Kingsford. It is back to basics week, all week long here at Rectech. It means we're bringing you those awesome basic recipes that you guys have come to know and love. Well, without any further ado, I'm going to throw it over to my main man, your master chef, Greg Muller. What's up, Rectech family? I'm Chef Greg, and appreciate you guys joining us for another episode of Lunch Break, presented by Rectech, powered by Kingsford. It's a beautiful day here in Evans, Georgia. A little, little crispy, a little, little chilly, but not too bad. Um, gah, if only, John, if only I had a beer opener. If only you had, if if only only you had, had a, a beer opener. But I do, I've got two, right on the side shelf, right here. Bada bing, bada boom, pow. Cheers, everybody. I love it. Mm. I wish I had a lime in there. That's how, it, when you're cold, just embrace the islands, okay? A nice cold Corona, Dos Equis. Just walk around in a bathing suit. You're going to feel warmer, trust me. You are. You are. <laughs> but this week is back to basics week. We're going to show you how to do some easy peasy lemon squeezy recipes. And today we're going to show you not just how to make one recipe, but how you can utilize one piece of meat and make multiple things. That way you can save a lot of the grocery store feeding your friends and family and not break your budget because we've had a great week so far. Jody showed you guys how to make those jalapeno poppers. He actually stuffed some of those with shrimp. I mean, are you surprised? He is like the Rectech Grills expert slash shrimp maniac. He is, totally. He holds the world record for most shrimp consumed in a three-minute period. He, <laughs> he consumed... 673 shrimp in three minutes. Good God. He beat out Joey Chestnut. He beat out the Black Widow. He is on the World Food Championship shrimp eating team. There you um, go. I love that guy. There you go. It's fantastic. Throw Chef it John showed you how to make those little mini meatloaves. That's right. Those individual meatloaves, which are great, because then you can even take it for, like, making a sandwich on a baguette bread. Ooh, Perfect for a sandwich, please. Chef Greg. You could have put some mozzarella and marinara on top of there and had, like, a delicious, like, meatball sub thing going on. Yeah, I said it. Really good. Mm -hmm. um, Tuesday, Jody showed you guys everything. Chicken, thighs, they were amazing. Last night, we staked it up. Oh, man. Dude, it was so good. So good, so Chef good. Greg. And we can't forget about the ladies erect those barbecue girls. They went ahead and showed you how to make the uh, Calby beef. Not yeah. really an introductory recipe, but they'll catch on. Don't hold it against them. Yeah. Okay? But they do us a favor. Go ahead and smash the share button there. Comment down below. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel so we can bring you guys amazing content and more. If you have any questions, go ahead and fire them away down below. My buddy Chef John will go ahead and read us out. And that's how this works. This is interactive. Yeah. you got to let us know what's going on. Okay? I think Jerry Maguire said it best. Help us help you. That's it. Help us help you. Help us help you. Mm-hmm. Help us. This is a eight and a half pound piece of meat right here. It was sixteen and a half dollars. This pack of pork tenderloin, now there is two. This was a double pack, so this would be four. $13, okay? It's only four pounds. So basically for the same price, you're getting like four more pounds of meat. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a value to me. Chef John's having a little mic battery swappage over there. Sherpa, got to set him up, man. Got to set him up. Geez, Sherpa. Gah. We still love Sherpa. It's okay. It's okay. All right, but we're going to show you guys how to doctor up this pork loin and get the most bang for your buck because that's how we roll around here at Rectech, okay? But when Chef John gets settled up, I'm he's going to get us some comments right there. So this is that pork loin. There is a little bit of liquid in there. That's not blood. It's just purge, okay? I like to get a big slicing knife, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and... Now, we did have some haters the other day. Yes. Okay? I just want to, we're going to start it right here. You see this cutting board? How it's kind of checkered and darker? Mm -hmm. You see those cutting boards? They're not the same. They're okay? not. We are going to cut raw on here and cooked on there. Different knife. 
Okay, this one's got a blue handle, that one's got abalone shell. So if you're trying to throw some shade out there saying I'm cross-contaminating, good luck won't happen, <laughs> not this guy. Okay, you know who you are. I'm talking to you. I am. Mm-hmm. All right. But Chef John, any good comments coming in over there? Uh, they're all just starting to tune in. They're saying how uh, nice and cool it is in their parts of the country. It's nice and cool here in the beautiful uh, worldwide headquarters for Rec Tech in Evans, Georgia. It's cool for sure, man. Yeah. Like, beautiful day. People are calling me from somewhere in Eatonton, Georgia. Now, I can't Chef answer. Greg, everybody's super excited too that you are doing pork. I guess we have a lot of pork lovers out there, or either people have a lot of pork in their refrigerators. I like pork, man. Yeah, I'm gonna too. go ahead and just wipe up some of that purge. Now, the pork loin, okay? It's got a couple different pieces to it. Now, this side here, you notice it's kind of a different shape. This is more of your leaner meat, more of that white meat, okay? Over here, you get some of this dark meat coming in here. That's the good good, okay? So what I like to do is over here on this side, okay? I like to cut some pork steaks. Okay. Okay? Just like that. Yes, that's a steak. It could also be a chop, a boneless pork chop. Okay? Just follow with me. It's okay. One inch thick. Okay? Just like that. Bada bing, bada boom. You can season those up. Delicious. Let's do, let's do five, John. There you go. Because there's five of us that's right. that want to eat. Okay? Now, here, you can see where that kind of changes. See how it's that sort of chain muscle is in here? About right in here, it changes a little bit. You'll see a little bit more dark meat. I like to cut it right here at that seam, right before that dark meat starts to take over. Don't worry. We're going to hook that guy up. Yeah. So this is where I like to get my roasts, okay? Super even and consistent, okay? So to me, I would roast this whole and slice it thin. Now, you can take this fat cap off. There is some silver skin under there, um, and we'll show you about that. I like to take it off. That way I get some really nice tender slices. Okay. Now, if we were doing like a, a GBA event or a Georgia barbecue event, you know, smoking some whole pork loins, we would actually shape this all the way down. But make sure this is good and cold. This has been sitting out for about a half an hour, so it's not super cold. But get this piece of meat in the freezer for about a half an hour. Get it super cold. It'll trim up super duper easy. This knife is almost too sharp. It's going right through that, uh, right through that silver skin. We got a question for Matt Oliver. What's up, Matt? He said, would you recommend cooking a pork loin and then shredding it? Uh, pork loin will not shred. So this is a lean muscle. So it's better cooked to uh, temperature. So you want to take this to right about, you know, 140 degrees, let it rest and slice it up. Um, there's not enough fat that's going to warrant breaking down to shred. So stick the shredding to, you know, your pork shoulders, pork butts, picnics, things of that nature. Because that's the... Uh, that's the good good right there. Not enough fat in these muscles to uh, to do that, and it's kind of a waste on your leaner meats, because again, you're not you're not benefiting from from that. Now people are like, oh my god, chef, you're taking all the fat away. It's okay, okay, because you're not going to be able to eat that silver skin. It's not super palatable, okay. It's not as not as coarse as as beef, but it's still not not crazy nice. Chef John, any comments coming in, buddy? Uh, they're just loving your uh, knife skills. Yeah. Trained assassin. That's right. All right, so right here, this is looking pretty good. Okay? Now we can rub that down, season it up. Actually, I'm going to... Now, if we were doing this for a competition, okay, I would make sure the top of this is perfectly smooth. There's one little bit right here. Ooh, boop. Yes. One more. We need the sound effects. Okay? All right, so now I've got our roast, okay? And this is that dark meat, okay? Now I'm going to cut it right here just so I can show you guys kind of what we're looking like. See how that it changes? This is going to be more of a supple, a little bit more of a fattier texture to it, but delicious. I love this portion of the pork loin. Now you can cut steaks out of it. It's still right. really good, but I like stir fry, okay? Mm. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this down. And we're going to do like a little Mongolian pork or, uh, you know, char siu or whatever. All we do is, now again, get it good and cold. Yeah. Okay. And then we're just going to slice it nice and thin. Yes. Just like that. Trumpet Master 77 says you can make tamales out of that cut. Shoot, right? yeah. I love tamales. That's, you know what? Tamales are a lot of work, though. They are. So Trumpet Master, go ahead and send us some, you know. 4301 Evans Locks Road. We do mail day Monday every Monday. 
That's right. Okay? So go ahead and send us some stuff. I, Jody Flanagan would do nothing more than eat some tamales that have been sitting in the uh, the mm -hmm. warehouse for three days. Sure enough. I'm going to go ahead and just shave. I mean, that's, that's what you want right there. Mm-hmm. Beep! Is yeah. good, good? Yeah, I mean, that, John, that will not suck. No, it will not, my friend. But again, this pork loin, super versatile muscle, okay? Often overlooked at the grocery store because people think it's kind of big and they don't know what to do with it. Well, I just showed you, for 16 bucks, you easily have enough steaks, roast, and stir fry for the week. For all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're hooked up for the week. And like I said, it's going to be, you know, pork is nice lean muscle okay and i don't know about you i get kind of tired of eating chicken yeah okay it's true i mean barred yard pimp is okay it's mm -hmm. got its place in life yes but i can't eat chicken like three days in a row but i could have a pork steak a pork roast and a stir fry it all tastes different i love it but we'll get there it's okay uh behind me we got the rt 590 rolling at 375 degrees we also have that rtb 380 bullseye because we're going to show you guys how to cook all this stuff Okay. Now, Chef Greg, if you wanted uh, any of the recipes you see us do on live shows, where do the people need to go? What do they need to do? Oh God, I love it, John. Thank you. Jump over to rectech.com slash lunch break. Put your email address in there, and uh, we will delicately insert these emails, uh, recipe emails to you. Sure enough, will. Um, it, now, just so you know, it might take a couple days. Yeah. Okay. Charlie is a busy guy. He is. You know, he's, he's one of he's our graphic hard. designers around here. He uh, creates all of those fun, excited exciting and interactive recipe cards okay but i said charlie's a busy guy so give him a couple days give him a couple days Stop all right sharks. so now we got our chops roast and our stir fry let me show you the uh, pork tenderloin here mm, scott sharp says um he would do some uh, boudin stuffed pork chops i dig it yeah, you I can send that. us some boudin too I'd again guys 4301 evans locks road we take it all now these are pork tenderloins they're about a pound each. Think of this as the filet mignon of the pig. There you go. Okay. There's a little bit of silver skin on the top. You do want to remove that, okay? But other than that, you don't need to trim anything. Just get a nice sharp knife, get it good and cold, and just take that silver skin right what off. What are you talking about? You can't save it, can't use it. Um, is this step necessary? No. Does it make it better? Yes. Definitely yes. Okay, so Chef John and myself are telling you. Yes. Remove the silver skin. Okay? And if there's like some gobbly goo right here just take it off okay and that's it right there pork tenderloin bada bing bada boom I told you it's easy okay pork ain't hard people it ain't hard people the only thing you can do to mess up pork is overcook it that's it now chef greg uh, we got a question from andy Gowen. what's up andy he, he asked can i mix charcoal pellets with the Rectech ultimate blend we do not advocate for charcoal pellets okay here's why those pellets are already like par combusted if you will Okay, what they're going to do is they're going to create a lot of ash, and you're going to give yourself the risk of a burn back uh, within that barrel. We don't recommend it. We've tested it. It doesn't even taste like charcoal, okay? So we would tell you if it was worth it. Mm -hmm. Not worth it. Now, maybe in the future somebody can figure it out, but right now those that are, uh, those that are manufacturing those, no dice. No Not dice. Not for me. Not for me. Now, Chef Greg, we got a couple of people out here that are admiring your knife skills and your knife. Yeah, but they wanted to pick up a good, uh, sturdy chef's knife, where could they go? Yeah, I'm a firm advocate of JapaneseChef'sKnife.com. You can check out the Fujiwara series. They're actually uh, sponsors of Rectech Academy. Um, but again, about 100 bucks. Um, there's nothing wrong with some things you can buy here in the States, but a lot of times you're paying a lot for marketing, so they kind of lower the, the quality uh, in the knife to kind of make up for it. Whereas, you know, a lot of uh, boutique knife makers do it for the love of the game. Like, they grew up doing it, watching mm -hmm. their dads, grandfathers, mm -hmm. you know, making the knives. It's a family business. So, again, you, you get a lot more quality there. So, again, this pork loin, sorry, pork tenderloin, okay, you can see the size difference there. Loin, tenderloin. You can cut this into steaks, too, if you want to do little, uh, little pork steaks. Yeah. Or you can cook it whole. Up to you now, okay? Just to further just show everybody, this right here, this is dirty, okay? This is going to go away right down here. Bye-bye. Okay? So we are not using that anymore. So all you haters out there, 
clean board, clean hands, clean knife. That's it. We just want to just be transparent, okay? That's how we roll around here. John, you want to, uh, let's say you, we get into the uh, stir fry. Yeah, let's so do it. So we can it. marinate. Let's do okay. it. Okay. All right, easy peasy marinade. You can use teriyaki sauce from the grocery store. Maybe you signed up for that Rectech lunch break email, and uh, you're going to do the uh, Calbee beef marinade. You can do that on pork, too. Okay? So some soy sauce, sesame oil. Okay? Also a secret for some really good brisket, rub it down with sesame oil before you put a rub. It'll give you some nice uh, umami flavors. Ooh, Hoisin like sauce. That. Fermented black bean paste right there. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. So good. Yep. I'm being lazy today, so I'm going to grab that Jody's Asian Persuasion. Okay? A little bit of that. If you got some fresh ginger, great. If you don't, oh well. You got some garlic, great. If not, oh well. A couple sesame seeds. Yeah, yeah. And if you had, okay, it's not a requirement, but if you had some red food coloring. Yeah. You can go ahead and put some red food coloring in there. <laughs> and now you got that red boneless pork rib. That's right. So you're going to take this delicious shaved pork. And that's You're the dark meat, right, Chef Greg? Yeah. Yep. And that's what you want, though, a little more fat in there. Mm -hmm. And just mix that up. You can do this like the night before, early that next morning. That's what you want. And just let that marinate just like that. And I tell you what, when we uh, stir fry that, you ain't ready. Okay? And I said you're not ready because we're ready. I got a bag right here. <laughs> I did it ahead of time. Okay? And again, let it marinate. Ooh, so good. Stay with me, people. Stay we got willing. a lot going on. All right, so let's, uh, I'll tell you what. Put that there. We'll just season on this. Pork. Yeah. It lends itself to a lot of flavors. Mm -hmm. You can go sweet. You can go heat. You can go savory. That's right. Whatever you like. Okay? Yeah, you, you heard that right. Just salt and pepper. Just herbs. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to, like, light someone up and do some Ron screaming pig rub. Go for it. Why not? Live your best rec tech lifestyle. Do it. I know. These people need to get in the comment section. Okay? Yeah. Well, we Smash got that share button. Let we, us know. Let us know. We got a couple questions. I got one for you. Come from CDo23. You got Jetski? He asks, uh, could you put charcoal briquettes on the heat deflector if you just uh, had to get some of that charcoal flavor? Definitely would not recommend that. Again, charcoal is going to give you a good bit of ash. You don't want to get that in the bottom of your grill and start causing problems. Okay? Don't overcomplicate it, people. Okay? The Rectech lifestyle is an easy lifestyle. It's a fun lifestyle. Okay? There's no need to go crazy and run in a muck. Okay? We're sensible people, all of us. A little olive oil on these chops. And I'm thinking we're going to kind of handle these chops kind of like steak. Okay. So, John, I'm going to go ahead and grab that Boar's Night Out White Lightning. Yes, I love that stuff. Okay? Even Sherpa was like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're just going to go ahead and hit these pork chops with that Boar's Night Out White Lightning. Just like that. Yes. Okay? Uh, That's what I'm talking about. Now we're going to go savory. Right here. Colton's freaking Greek. Okay? Yes. Now you can eat this like Christmas dinner. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. All these leftovers you can shave up and make like a really good like roasted pork sandwich or like a pork style French dip. Okay, don't forget the ends. You can see how nice and beautiful lean that meat. It's good stuff, Sherpa. Yeah, it is. Pork loin. You know what? I want to go a little more barbecue. Rossaruski's honey rib rub. Yes. Now, you could also wrap this stuff in bacon if you want. Okay? Great way to add some more fat and more flavor to it. But not necessary, is it, Chef Greg? It's not. But it is delicious. It is delicious. Okay? So... That right there is looking really good. Speaking of delicious, we're going to go ahead and get this pork roast on this 700 at 325 degrees, just like that. We're looking for an internal temp of 140 degrees. That should take right about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. Okay? It's really simple. Okay? But I don't want to wait an hour and 15 minutes. I can go on riot mode, cook some of these bad boys in about 10 minutes. Get on in here, Sherp. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead, 
Get our pork tenderloins on there. I'm gonna throw some pork chops on there, just like that. And just for giggles, we're gonna stick these pork chops right there, because you know what? Why not? Yeah, don't touch that, that's hot. Okay, super simple. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So Chef Greg, Scott Magnus is asking, is that straight olive oil or is that an olive oil blend? Straight olive oil, okay? Straight olive oil. No need to get crazy with it, just straight olive oil. Again, clean cutting boards, clean knife. Can't say it enough. That's right. I might say it a couple more times this episode. Nice clean plate. All right, what do you say, Sherpa, we uh, go ahead and stir fry? I'm gonna save this for Chef John, because he looks like he's a growing boy. Yeah. We'll save that one for him. Yeah. But I will take this pan to get everything off. Get my gloves. All right, Chef Greg, we have another question from Boots AF1. Let's go, Boots. Says uh, Boots he, uh, they smoked a, a pork tenderloin the other day. Okay. Said it turned out juicy, but had no flavor at all. Uh, they were thinking, should they just do a uh, marinade? And they just had tried a dry rub, and it came out lacking. So maybe the dry rub's a little flat, okay? Look at your seasonings. I like to kind of over-season my food. I like to layer my rubs. So maybe that seasoning's been laying in the pantry. It's a little flat. Maybe you want a little more spice, a little more sweetness, a little more savory. Um, again, pork is very mild as it is. Blank canvas. Um, again, there's not a lot of, you can marinate, um, but the larger muscles, you're not really gonna get that flavor in there. You can inject pork loins. Pork loins are fantastic to take some injection. I was wondering why I was getting kind of parched, John. I wasn't drinking my you beer. You were, yeah, that's exactly right. Sip up. Dehydration is the number one killer. God, we don't want to hurt anybody. All right, a little olive oil. Let's check this out. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and just stir fry Ooh, a little bit of that pork. Yes. Now you don't need to get crazy. Don't overfill the grill, okay? Just let that go a couple minutes and then uh, we'll mix it up and that's gonna be done in no time. Mm, no mm, time. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, that's how we roll around here. That's how we do it. Now, Chef Greg, if, you, if, if these people out here want to know about new products released, where we're going to be, when we're going to be at new places, yeah. could, where do they need to go? What do they need to do? Well, every Friday when we're at an event somewhere, we're going to be wearing the swankest of shirts ever. Oh, yeah. Chef John got his tailored the other day. He's mm -hmm. looking crisp. So nice. Okay. He's got that, that 2XL. <laughs> okay. He's, he's no longer that 3XL kind of guy. Okay? That's right. Half, half, half the size, twice the guy. That's You know it. That's the I dang mean, truth right there. That's how he rolls around there. That's right. But guys, jump over to uh, rectech.com. Scroll to the bottom of any page. Sign up for the newsletter. Um, again, we don't bombard you with, uh, you know, the minutia. Important stuff. Yeah. Maybe you want to know when front-folding shelves are back in stock. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to know when there's a new product launch. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to know when there's Rectech Fest or a mm -hmm. barbecue caddy coming up. That's right. You just got to subscribe to the newsletter. It's that simple. Sure, but let's take a quick look because there's a grill right behind me, this RT590. Again, this is a great mid-size grill, features a 30-pound hopper, four-year warranty, ceramic condition, still got that white pellet Wi-Fi controller, but check this out. Oh, I yes. went ahead and I bacon wrapped yes. a pork loin, okay? And we've got one with just herbs, and we're looking for right about 140 degrees on the inside. Look at that, 142. This one's a little bit, a little bit more, but I want to glaze this bacon wrapped yes. pork loin with some sauce and uh thank you barbecue pitmasters for the uh the brush now we uh we got a little honey rib rub on the pork loin and we put a little more honey rib rub on top of the bacon okay. Okay. but you know we like some bacon weaves around here yeah i like where your head's at I mean, John, it's been a while since we've done a bacon weave. We sure enough have. You want barbecue sauce on the savory too, or yes? No? Let's do it. All right. Salsa. He asked for it. I'll do it. I we like also it have saucy. those nonstick cooking mats in the grill. Makes moving meat a breeze. Mm -hmm. Probably one of my favorite accessories at Rectech.com. Oh, sure. shoot, yeah, buddy. And again, you can kind of overcook the uh, the dark end of that roast, and it's still going to be super moist and tender because, I mean, a lot of fat. And you've got a really good environment to uh, to get all that stuff cooking. But let me yeah. go ahead and stir up this stir fry because I think we're probably about done here. Man, that smells delicious. As soon as you open that grill, I can smell the smells. Shoot, yeah. Again, using cast iron, use a wooden spoon. Don't use uh, any metal in there. Look at that, looking good. I'm gonna add just a little bit of green onion. 
a little more sesame seeds. Yes. And just a blip of soy sauce. Blip That's it. it. That's it. And this right there, boys and girls, chicken and squirrels. Damn, that smells so good. Mongolian pork. Just like that. Look at that. Yes. Doesn't get any better than that right there. Mongolian pork. Right? Come on now. Come on now. You could do a nice lo mein with this. Maybe you want to use some fwai wise. There you go. Ooh. Mongolian pork. Man, that looks absolutely delicious. Shoot, yeah. Sure, but we got more meat. Let's go flipping. Mm, I feel mm, like I'm on an infomercial. It's going to be such a great day today at work. I knew it was. I could Again, feel it. no sear kit right here. Look at that caramelization. Look at that heat. Now check out the, uh, the difference here. See, a little bit darker, a little bit different color. Sear kit, no sear kit. I love it. Both delicious. Oh, me, oh my. Mm -hmm. So good. A little crispy edge there. Again, we're looking for 140 degrees. All right, so Jamie, one of our fantastic techs back there is telling me to remind you guys, when What's you're doing that? a lot of hot and fast cooks, when you got grease going up in that grill, the rear vents can become clogged. When that happens, it's like sticking a potato in your muffler. Your car's not going to run real good. Nope. Okay? So you can grab a wooden skewer, you know, a toothpick, um, clean out those vents. You can use a flathead screwdriver, but over time, they will get clogged. It's just like cleaning your fire pot. Okay? So maybe every four to five cooks when you clean your fire pot, clean your vents. It's that simple. That's simple, It guys. is that simple. Mm -hmm. um, but we're probably almost done on this pork because here's why. Those pork chops. You're cooking from the top down and the bottom up because that fan in there is going to circulate all of that delicious heat. And you know what, John? You know what we didn't tell the people out we there? We did not tell them. We didn't tell the people out there what pellets we were cooking with. Yeah, why don't you let them know? On the RTB 380 Bullseye, we've got those Kingsford maple pellets because I want to add a little bit more sweetness to my food. Now we're going a little bit of a lower temp on the 590. I'm running those hickory pellets because I want some smoke in my meats. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, come on. 110, oh, yes. whoop, 109, 123. We're getting real close. But Sherpa, don't go nowhere. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these hot gloves. Okay. And we're going to pull our roast pork off. I love because it. Because I ain't going to burn my mittens. Okay? Ain't going right. to happen. That's right. Now, Chef Craig, is that why you have it on that grill mat? Is so that you could move it around easily? Yeah. Okay. Waste not, want not. That's Come what I'm on. talking about. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pick up that mat. Help us put the glove on right. Fingers in all holes. All right. Again, 375. Check out that savory roasted pork. Yes. Just like that. Look at this bacon wrapped pork. Oh, cheese. Cheese and crackers. That's right. I mean, that does not suck, John. Oh, yeah. Does Can I get a oh, yeah? No, don't. Please don't. <laughs> if you, don't, don't encourage him, people. Okay? I love me some Chef John. Yeah. But not when he does the Jody thing. It's just creepy, and it's, it's just strange. <laughs> okay? But I still like you, but it is creepy and strange. John, how many people got out there watching today? We have 120, 135 people out there watching not right now. Not a bad crowd Craig. for the YouTubes today. No, it's definitely not. Okay, but guys, do me a favor. Go ahead and make sure you subscribe. Go ahead and smash that share button and drop this video into your favorite social media platform. That's right. Maybe it's MeWe. Maybe it's Parlor when it comes back. Instagram, YouTube, I don't know. Don't care. Just share it. Okay? All right, Chef we got a question from B. Hillard. He asked, Let's go. best size cast iron pan to fit in the bullseye? Um, so it's a 22-inch kettle-style grill, so anything under that will be just fine. I tend to use a lot of the 12-inch cast iron pans because for like a couple people. Now, that's, that's enough for four people right there, okay? This right here, this stir-fry, that's enough for four people. So I could easily do a side dish with that, and that's perfect. I don't need a bigger pan, mm -mm. okay? Maybe get more friends. I don't. Four people. That's it. Sherpa, John, and Charlie. We're good. That's it. 
All right, so we got another question coming from Boots AF1. says, do you sell those cutting boards? Uh, we do not sell cutting boards. But if you come to Rec Tech Academy, we might have some cutting boards for you. But again, look at that sear. Lots of flavor there. But again, we're looking for right about 140 degrees. Getting close. 126, 127. Again, these are going to be a little under. We didn't want to let your pork roasts rest for at least 15, 20 minutes. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do that today because Chef John didn't eat breakfast and no. didn't eat lunch. I'm hungry. He's hungry. I'm He's hungry. a growing boy. Yeah. Okay. He hits the gym like That's three right. times a day. That's it. He's eating his vitamins. Yeah, say my okay. prayers. Hulk Hogan, 22-inch python. That's it. You know it. All right. So this is that savory pork loin right here. Mmm. Look at that. So You can nice. see that pinking. Now, we cooked this at 375. You still have a smoke ring at 375. Mm. Look at how moist and juicy and absolutely stupid amazing that looks. I didn't do anything. Literally put some rub on there, stuck it on the grill, and uh, had a conversation with uh, Chef John for the better part of the morning. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. It's that simple. Chef Greg, uh, yeah, Kevin Powers asked, what kind of hot gloves are those? Uh, they're just cotton gloves. Pick them up in the Amazon. Again, this is that bacon wrapped. Mm. You can see nice and crispy. Yes. And juicy. Like that right there, people, is pork perfection. Okay. Chef Greg. Yeah, buddy. I want to give a shout out to, I hope I'm saying her name right, Noreen Iway. Okay. She's saying hello to us from Israel. What? Yeah. I like, you know what? I, I think there was just a, a bombing in Israel not oh, the really? other day, so I hope you guys are safe out yeah, there sure. in Israel. We want all of our international friends uh, staying safe out there. But look at that pork loin right there. Mm, mm, I'm going to mm. keep slicing. Slice of vision. Okay. That bacon's not falling off. It's not going anywhere. That pork is perfectly cooked. Okay. Mm, and mm, if you mm. wanted to be like Jody Flanagan, barbecue expert, he would tell you. Go ahead and put a little rub on the top. He sure enough would. Yeah. He'd already put some on there. He's the barbecue sure. expert, but it's Jody B Flanagan, barbecue dad. That's right. Or it's barbecue dad, Jody Flanagan. I keep getting that wrong. Yes. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's barbecue dad, Jody barbecue Flanagan, dad. Chef Greg Muller. <laughs> There, there, he <laughs> there he is. Right there. There he is. He just did it. Or Chef John Pinnell. Please follow us on all of our social media, guys. I love that guy. Absolute maniac. He is. All right, Chef Greg. Scott Weatherby says, you got a great one, Scott. Uh, he says, you guys need to have an academy out west or at least a traveling one. That's well, something I mean, to put on the books there, Scott. We could, but we have a lot of, uh, a lot of resources nearby. We really do. So it's kind of hard to, uh, to do things out west when everything's right here. And, you know, we kind of have a good thing going here in Evans, Georgia, okay? That's right. Things are only going to get bigger and better, okay? That's what I'll talk Charlie's about. using vulgarity over there. This is a, a family-friendly show here, Charlie. <laughs> All Chef right, but we got the pork stir-fry, mm -hmm. savory roast pork loin, yes. the bacon-wrapped pork loin, the pork chops, and these pork tenderloin. Come on, Sherpa. Look at these things. Like, looking amazing right mm -hmm. here. Okay? And again, we want to get these right about 140 degrees. I think we're probably about 110. No, we're getting, uh, we're getting there. Let's glaze these bad boys up. That we're using that Barbecue U GPA delicious. sauce today. Go ahead and give them a, uh, a follow on all social media. Tell them Rectech sent you. That's right. Again, that's the University of Q GPA sauce. Just a couple minutes on those, and we are good. But you can see there's just juice for days over for here, John. For days. Chef for Greg. days. Yeah, Dan buddy. Dan Timble asks, do you ever need to clean the smokestack of your RT680? So if you've got an older grill and you're rolling through, you know, bag after bag after bag after bag, pallet after pallet of pellets, at some point, yeah, it would probably behoove you to remove that smokestack. You will see a little uh, stalagmites and stalactites going on there. It's just creosote, just like your fireplace. Those of you that have wood-burning stoves, you have to clean your flues and you have to keep, keep your fireplaces clean. 
your smokestack is no different. So maybe, you know, depending on how much you cook, maybe once every year or every other year, take it off, clean it out, you're good to go. What you want to make sure you do is you've got about two fingers between the arm and the uh, lid of your smokestack. Um, that way you get good circulation of air. Very important. Chef John, good question. Kathy Sheet says uh, we need to have a rookie academy for beginners, but isn't an academy there are? There's okay. no like academy is for everybody. That's what I'm talking about. It doesn't about. matter if you've ne we've had customers that have come to academy that have never cooked on a rec tech before and never smoked anything. That's right. They leave here, okay? Literally magna cum laude <laughs> in barbecue. It's true. We show them how to do everything. That's true. It's a very warm, open environment. The cool part about Academy, it's it's very small. It's very family centric. Yeah. So you you are working one on one with a barbecue pitmaster. You know, maybe yeah. your group of five or six people tops. You could find yourself working with the one and only Chef John. It's true. I guarantee you're not going to learn as much as me, but have a better time. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> He's actually, uh, I think, as as a whole, I think his teams have scored. Yeah, a, little bit, a little bit higher we're, than we're starting to come up. You know, it took me a little while to get you got, on the barbecue game. You know, you got to start somewhere, but I think I think you sandbagged the first one. I did. Uh, that way, you you know, I you can get the, you get the, the MVP, you know the MVP me, award. Greg. You know me, but not just for beginners, though, Chef Greg, for experienced barbecuers yep. too as well. Yep, uh, it's fun for everybody. And we got uh, barbecue people coming in this at the end of the month, actually. So Brian Jarvis and Ellen Jarvis with Atlanta Barbecue Store are coming in town. Uh, Robert Vanderweip and his uh, lovely wife. Uh, Lex is coming in town with Smoke Me Silly Barbecue. That's right. So I'm excited. There's those pork tenderloins. Chef, my, we've gotten this question a few Miss times American tonight pie. or today. What? Uh, what's the best way to clean the cutting boards? Um, so when they're like super, like, first of all, you want to make sure they're well oiled. Uh, you don't want to have juices puddle on the board. I like to do a salt scrub. It's good for your face too, right? Um, I'll get a little... Uh, you know, soapy water and grab some salt and just kind of uh, rub some abrasive on the top of the surface. I'll rinse it. I will dry it very well. And I say, I'll dry it well. The Sherpa will. And then he'll take uh, some board oil and go ahead and, and rub that in. Let it sit and have that oil penetrate all over that delicious hardwood right there. John, we ready to slice this, eat some of this before we go? I we kind of had a little bit of a long show today. I yeah, apologize. There's a little long there's show. There's a lot going on today. They were super entertained, Chef Greg. They learned a lot, they said. And they love these shows where you demonstrate a whole bunch of different what, applications. What movie is that when they were like, are you not entertained? Gladiator. 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 Yeah, Russell Crowe is a psycho, though. Yeah, he is a psycho, but he makes good movies. All right, you can see this pork tenderloin. Ooh. Super, super moist. Yes, sir. These are like big boy bites. Mm, I like big boy bites. You would go back in for the sauce. Well, I mean, okay. come on. All right, cheers to you. Cheers, cheers to, to me. You. Cheers, America. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Juicy, flavored to perfection. You got hints of smoke on there. Little Man. crispy bits, that mm -hmm. honey rib rub. That does not suck. Mm -mm. Mm. That's really good, Chef Fred. We have a lot of pork to eat. Oh, yeah. I'm taking one more with me. Yeah, you do it, man. Mm. All right, buddy. You guys got to do us a favor. Go ahead and smash that share button. Comment down below. Let us know if you enjoyed this mm. episode mm -hmm. of Lunch Break. And if you guys want to see more episodes like this where we kind of step back a little bit and show you what we got going on, just let us know. We are here for you. That's right. Okay? So mm. in the words of Jerry Maguire, mm. help us help you. Yes. Chef John might say, show me the money, show but me I'm the a money. help me help you kind of guy. Yeah, show me all the right. money kind of guy. Make sure you guys follow us on all social media. We have a great rest of the week. Later on tonight, uh, Chef, or today or actually, Chef John and Jody do Product Spotlight at 4 o'clock. That's going to be on YouTube. And then Chef John's staying up late for the late, late, late love show, yeah. that late night munchies. That's going to be on Instagram at 11 o'clock. Don't miss out tomorrow, fun day, Friday, 12 noon Eastern on Facebook. It's the most watched, most entertaining show on the internet yeah. that's a fact that's yeah. okay we We're got voting. the trophy upstairs joe yeah, just show you tomorrow that's right absolutely sure. mm -hmm. but guys make sure you follow us on all social media from all of us here at the rec tech grill world wide headquarters god bless you god bless the united states and we will see you at, at the rec tech. tech do 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 rec tech lifestyle. lifestyle set it and come get it